मनचारे जमुना किरण चारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी राधा माधव जू की जय प्रभात की जय स्वयं विष्णु पर परमहंस परिव्रज कचाज अष्टोत्तर शत श्री श्रीमान ही सिवाई ग्रह सब चरण आरविंद स्वामी श्रील प्रभुपाद की इस कौन तिस्त आचार्य जगत गुरु श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय चाय अनंत कोट वैष्णव वृंद की जय नमाचार्य श्री हरिभष ठाकुर की जय प्रेम सिंह हो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत कर था शिवा श्री गौर भक्त वृंद की जय जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोपोपीनाथ श्याम कुंद राधा कुंद गिरी गोवधान की जय श्री वृंदावन राम की जय नवदीप श्री मायपुर धाम की जय गंग माई की जय जमुन माई की जय भक्ति देव की जय तुलसी महारानी की जय श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन गौर भक्त वृंद की जय जय निताय गो प्रेम नंदी हरि हरि गो All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glory to Sri Guru and Sri Goranga. Glories to Sri Prabhupada. Shri Mata Radha Rani Mahotsav, Abhi Bhav Mahotsav Titi Ki Jai, Radha Mata Bhuju Ki Jai. Prabhupada said this song, Radha Mata Bhuju, is the picture of Vrindavan. Radha is there, Krishna is there, Govardhan, Chamuna, Jasoda. It's a picture of Brindal. <coughs> so today we were celebrating the appearance day of Srimati Radharani, the internal potency of the Lord, the pleasure potency, the best of all the potencies of Krishna. He, Krishna likes happiness, everybody likes happiness. It's the goal of life. Whatever anyone is doing is for happiness. Uh, that is the purpose of life. The purpose of life is happiness, pleasure. But Krishna's pleasure. <laughs> but we've mistaken it to be our purpose of life is for my pleasure. <clears throat> purpose of life is, is for Krishna's pleasure. <clears throat> So she is that actual pleasure potency. She is what gives Krishna that. When the Haladini potency is there, then Krishna will relate to that person or service. <clears throat> because of the pleasure potency that's there. Uh, so the idea is that when we become purified by the process of devotional service, then. Uh, <clears throat> <coughs> uh, then the Haladini potency can come. Haladini potency means the Ananda potency. We say Satchit Ananda, or Shandini Shambit, and Haladini. So uh, that's the pleasure potency. Uh, so when, that, uh, when the uh, devotees have that potency, by the special mercy of Radharani, and the devotees is bestowed. <coughs> Upon a living entity, uh, at that time, the Haladini, Haladini potency becomes manifest <coughs> in the heart, and that's what attracts Krishna, this Haladini potency within the devotees. So God's business is pleasure. So the pleasure is the Haladini potency. <coughs> 
Uh, that is why we always try to seek the mercy of Sri Mata Radharani. And Krishna tells, I think, Narad Muni or Uddhava, that I say unto you again and again and again and again that uh, if, you, if you want my mercy, then you should get the mercy of Sri Mata Radharani. Otherwise, my mercy doesn't arise. <clears throat> so, anyway, the Krishna appears with his pastimes to enlighten the world and bring all the living entities back home, back to Godhead. That's his business of Krishna. Sometimes he brings, he comes, he brings his, his own place, Brindavan, his own devotees, his mother, Jasoda, Nandamara, the cowboys, Radharani, the gopis, cows, peacocks, everything, the river, Jamuna, Govardhan, Radha Kun. Uh, he displays all of this, all these wonderful pastimes. That is his mercy. And now we have something to talk about, something to hear about, something to chant about. If God just appeared here and then he left. <laughs> That's nice, but uh, when he comes, he leaves his pastimes, he, he performs the pastimes, leaves them be behind them, they're recorded by different sages. So now we have something to talk about, now we have something to chant about, now we have something to serve about. <clears throat> so this is the mercy of Krishna, when he appears here, or his devotees appear here, uh, they give us an opportunity to Remember the eternal pastimes of the Lord. So, there's a few appearances of Radharani. They're kind of majestic. Many stories we get from different Puranas. They're not exactly a Shukadeva because Swami was speaking it because he was. Uh, Shukadeva because Swami is a great Rashika, relisher of Krishna's pastimes. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> yeah, so a lot of these things are not in Bhagavatam because they're, they're all uh, kind of a majestic aspects of Radha and Krishna. But they, they're getting covered by their uh, uh, opulence, by the, uh, the sweetness gets taken away of the Vrindavan sweetness. So many, many stories in the Puranas and they're dealing with Radha and the, the kind of majestic aspects. But uh, Sukadeva Goswami didn't touch so much on that, but he spoke just the relationships in Vrindavan, the, the different uh, emotions that they <coughs> uh, share in Vrindavan. Because this is, uh, this is actually the original feature of a Godhead. Krishna in his Kishore age with Srimata Radharani, boy girl. This is the original origin of sex. Prabhupada said, where does it come from? It's in this material world. It comes from the spiritual world. Nothing can exist in the material world that's not in the spiritual world. So we find sex, life is in the material world. Why? Because it's there in Goloka Vrindavan, in the spiritual world. Otherwise, it wouldn't be that here or there. <clears throat> so, this is called the Adi Rasa, or the original Rasa of Krishna, Krishna's greatest pleasure uh, with his Srimati Radharani. <clears throat> uh, so, this is the original feature of God there, this conjugal relationship. And from this relationship, uh, all the other relationships expand, like Vatsalaras, Shakiras, Shantaras. They're all actually to assist the conjugal ras of Krishna. This is the original feature of Godhead. So all these others, just like the Vatsalaras, Radha and Krishna, the only thing they ever want is to be together. That's all they ever want. And. Uh, this is actually the picture of Brindavan. Everybody's working, united to 
bring Radha and Krishna together. And then after that, they're working to separate them again. And then again, they're working to unite them again. And through the different pastimes throughout the day, this is what's happening. Radha and Krishna meeting, <laughs> meet early, early morning, and they're separated. Then they come, they meet again at, <clears throat> at noon time. Krishna goes out with the cows, and with Radha Kun, they meet again at Radha Kun. Then they have to be separated again because they got to get home with the cows before it gets too dark and things like that. So separation is there. And again, in the night time, again, they are united by the different plans and programs from the different shakis, what pastimes we will have tonight. Where will the venue be? Where will... They're always discussing and then they're sending messages where, how to meet where. So it's, they're bringing together. So this is the picture of Vrindavan. It's bringing Radha and Krishna together and then separating them again. <clears throat> In the material world, we would think that the union was better. So let's have union all the time rather than separation. But in God's program, no. You, uh, the separation is there that enhances the, the, union, uh, the union when there is separation. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Hare Krishna. Yeah, so this is the picture of Vrindavan. Uh, so there's constant variety. It's not just one thing. If I was God, I would just have everything nice and... Well, sometimes. <laughs> not nice things. It's by fate, the elderly persons are there, just Soda and Nanda are there. How can Radha and Krishna be together? They're longing to be together. So the presence of just Soda and Nanda there, they're enhancing the love in separation from, from, from Radha and Krishna. So like they're helping it. They're Vatshala Ras, they're seeing Krishna as their child, but they're assisting in the conjugal Ras by their being superiors there. And Krishna can't act freely like he does with Radharani when they're alone with their friends. <coughs> so, There was, a, so there was a song, if I ruled the world, every day would be the first day of spring. So it'd be nice spring, everything is flowers and, okay, let's keep it like this forever. It's not like that, Krishna. Variety is the spice of life. Krishna has the summer season, the spring season, and the rainy season. So there's always constantly changing. Rainy season, they will do different things. They will. They go in the caves of Govardhan when it rains and things like that. And uh, so there's constant ch changing, con con constantly. It's not just one thing. It's just, I guess the idea is Mayavad, everything's the same. If, if, if we just pick the best of everything and we remain like this forever as God. No. We want to be together. No, God has separation also. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so this Krishna, Jugala, Kishore, this Krishna is the original feature of Godhead. It's very, very difficult to comprehend for scholars who are searching for the truth, the absolute truth, to come to a conclusion that God is a little cow boy <laughs> looking after cows. Very difficult. Uh, so this is the original feature of God. The, uh, generally when we find out, we're trying to find out the, the truth, we're seeking the truth. Uh, we want, it's good to start at one point, that's how generally we want to make a reference from one. It must be one point, everything started from one point. We can't comprehend that it, So scientists, they're trying to find that one point. There are different theories about, you know, everything expanded from that one point, that one point. But we say, no, uh, 
Uh, we say that God and his energy is expanded simultaneously, it manifested simultaneously because God alone, it's not much meaning to God actually. If you, without his potency, without his energy, it's not much meaning, just like the sunshine, if the heat and light of the sun, the energies of the light weren't present, then the sun would have no meaning. There'd be no light, there'd be darkness, there'd be no heat. So it has no meaning, God alone. Uh, so we say the, the original feature of God, it is God along with his energies, that man manifested along with his energies. It's not that there was one Krishna at one point, and then he manifested everything, although he's saying, Ahamsa Prabhupada, he did everything is coming from me. But we, God is like to understand that everything is manifested simultaneously. And God along with his different energies. This is a complete picture of God. <clears throat> so there's uh, one description of the appearance of Srimati Radharani. Today's a birthday appearance. Srimati Radharani Ki Chair. And uh, Maharaj Bishabano, he was taking his bath in the Jamuna. And then 1,000 petal lotus came floating down the Jamuna and touched the body of uh, Maharaj Bishabano. He was taking his bath in the Jamuna, meditating. In. Uh, and this lotus came, 1,000 petal lotus came and touched his body. So he opened his eyes and he saw it was a beautiful little girl in the world of the lotus kicking her legs like <laughs> arms and legs and like a little baby so he immediately took he was astonished by the beauty of the baby so he immediately took he didn't have any daughter uh, so he took her home and gave to Kirti Da uh, so the uh, Maharaj Bishabhanu and Kitida, these are the original eternal parents of, of Radharani. So Radharani just manifested herself through the lotus floating down on the Jamuna. There's also a description of Srimad Radharani created uh, um, Mayapur. This is from the number deep um, Mahatmya. Uh, from the Pamankan chapter two. Uh, from the Ananta Samhita. Parvati said, O oh Lord, please directly uh, uh, describe exactly how and when Sri Mataradharani created Nabadeep. Lord Shiva replied, Parvati, please hear the reason for Nabadeep's appearance, as described in Nanta Samhita, and as I heard from the mouth of Lord Narayana. As a bee plays on the lotus, Krishna was enjoying with Viraja in a pleasant forest grove in Vrindavan. The moon finds the doe-eyed Radhika heard this news from one Shaki and hastily ran to find Krishna. Seeing that Radha was coming, Krishna suddenly disappeared. And the Viraja river, uh, Vir Viraja Devi became a river. Radha again heard that Krishna was enjoying with Viraja and he went. Uh, but when she arrived there, she could not find them. Absorbed in thoughts of Krishna, Radha began to think. She gathered her shakis together with, in between the Ganges and the Jamuna River. She created there a beautiful place. we between the Ganges. Or Ganges okay. <coughs> ah. She created a beautiful place decorated with creepers and trees and filled with male and female bumblebees. Deers and bucks were happily engaged in enjoying as they wandered around. The whole area was filled with the fragrance of jasmine, mullica, and multi flowers. 
that transcendental abode was adorned with Tulsi forests and decorated with various groves. On Radha's order, the Ganges and Jamuna, with their pleasant water banks, acted as a moat to protect the garden. Cupid himself, along with springtime, eternally reside there, and the birds constantly sing the auspicious name of Krishna. Radha, dressed in a colorful cloth, began to play a beautiful melody on a flute in order to attract Krishna. Attracted by the melody, Krishna appeared in that enchanting place. Radha, the attractor of Krishna's mind, seeing that Krishna had come, held his Seeing that Krishna had come, held his hand and experienced ecstatic delight. Then Krishna, understanding Krishna's mood, spoke in the voice, stroke of love. O lovely face Radha, you are my very life. There is no one more dear to me. Therefore, I will never leave you. Just for me, you have created this wonderful place. Staying with you here, I will transform this place. Filling it with shakis and groves. The groves will be glorified. This place will, the, uh, the devotees will glorify this place as new Vrindavan, Nava Vrindavan. That this place is like an island or deeper. Otherwise, others call it Nabadweep. Otherwise, shall call it Nabadweep. By my order, all the holy places here reside. Because you have created this place for my pleasure, I will live here eternally. Those devotees who come here and worship us will certainly obtain our eternal service in the mood of the Shakis. O oh dear Radha, like Vrindavan, this place is extremely pure. If anyone comes here just once, he will attain the results of going to all the sacred places. He will quickly attain devotional service which satisfies us. Lord Shiva continued, O most fortunate Parvati, saying this, Krishna, the Lord of Radha, merged with Radha's body and began to reside there eternally. Seeing that Satchit Ananda form outwardly of a fair complexion, but inwardly Krishna himself Lalita gave up her beautiful form for the service of Garanga. She took on a male form to suitably receive the affection of Garanga. Seeing that Lalita had taken such a form, Bishaka and all the other Shakis also suddenly took forms, male forms. At that time, a tumultuous vibration of Jai Gohari filled the four directions. From that time, the devotees called this form of Krishna, Gaur Hari. Just as Radha is Gauri, fair, and Krishna is Hari. When they combine in one form, they are called Gaur Hari. Since then, the lotus-eyed, flute-playing, threefold bending form of Krishna and the lotus-eyed form of Radha, Radhika Devi, remain there combined in one form. Karanga Mahaprabhu ki, Gauru Hari ki. There's also a nice pastime of oh, Radha and Krishna. It's, it's called Shwapna Bilash, dreaming pastime. So one day Radha only woke up and she said, Krishna, I had just had an astonishing dream last night. And it was a beautiful place. Just like Vrindavan. It was full of groves and trees and there were birds and bees were humming. And there was a beautiful river, just like the Jamuna. And then there was this uh, beautiful golden Brahmana boy. And, and with his associates, and they were performing Harinam Shamkitan. <clears throat> and sometimes this golden boy, he'd be going, Ha Krishna, Ha Krishna, Ha Krishna, and he would fall on the ground. Just like I do that sometimes when I'm, I chant Krishna. And I'm, I'm like that sometimes. And then other times, that golden boy was saying, 
Hey Radha, hey Radha, hey Radha, where is Radha, or hey Radha. Ah. Just like you chanting like that. So, who was his personality? If it was me, then where were you? And if it was you, where was I? Because we're always together. Krishna said, a very, very mysterious dream. How am I expected to understand this deep mystery? <clears throat> Radha said, you know everything, Krishna. And because you are smiling now, I can understand who that person that it is. It was you and it was me, as both of us combined. What is the mystery of this, of this form? Uh, and, yeah, Radha said, because you, because you are smiling and I, you must know the reason for this. <clears throat> so, then Krishna's Kushtabi Mani, Kushtaba Manu, sorry, Mani, Jewel. Krishna has a Kushtaba Jewel. It's a, um, I've heard the description that it's like a jade stone. You know, the jade, semi-precious stone. Greenish color, pale kind of green. <clears throat> and it has a calf engraved on it. I think Mahanidhi Maharaj Maha gave that understanding. <clears throat> anyway, Krishna always has this Kushtaba money. This distinguishes him from others. Shribatsha and Kushtaba money he has. These are Krishna's eternal ornaments. <clears throat> so that began to illuminate and get lighter and lighter and it spread like rays. And Radharani was seeing that Gustava money manifesting. Then she saw, through those rays, she saw the pastime that she had at night, the dream. And she saw, uh, she saw that form of Goranga. <laughs> Uh, sometimes in the mood of Krishna, sometimes in the mood of Radha. <clears throat> it, it became manifested from that Kushtaba money. So she, says she was very happy to understand that, but she said another thing, I'm understanding from this, this Kushtaba money, I'm looking through the rays and I'm seeing my worshipful Lord who is Shama Shunda. Other person is looking at rays at the Kushtaba money but he's seeing his worshipable object. So who is ever your worshipable deity, you can see it through that particular ray. Although Krishna, she says, I can understand, Krishna is one and he becomes many. So Radharani says, this is it. Everybody's Ishtadeva, a worshipable deity, you can see it coming from that particular ray, from the Kustaba money. <coughs> It's like you look at the sun, we all look at the sun, everybody's going to be seeing through different sun rays. You're going to have your own sun ray, you'll see the sun. Uh, so similarly, everyone who is, uh, who, they have their worshipful deity, they can see that worship. Krishna is one, but looking through the rays of the Kustava Muni, they will see their worshipful Lord, maybe Ramachandra or Lakshmi Narayan or... Radha and Krishna. So Radha and Now I can understand that statement that you are one, but you are many simultaneously. Shmata Radha Rani Ki Jaya. So Shmata Radha Rani is the um, Prabhupada said the topmost mysteries, the topmost mysteries for Krishna's enjoyment. <laughs> but she has. Always engaging in Krishna service, she has, <coughs> and especially cooking for Krishna. She had a boon from <coughs> Devashamuni. I don't think it was the angry Devashamuni, it was another Muni. But uh, he was very pleased with her. I think she's, maybe she served him. And he was very pleased. And he, he said, I will give you a blessing <coughs> that every, anything you cook 
will become just like nectar. So Radharani has that benediction. So Jasoda understood that that Krishna has his special benediction. That whatever she cooks is like nectar. And I only want Krishna to have the best. He must have that, that nectar from Radharani's because she's the best cook. So Radharani, you have to come to my house every day and you have to cook for Krishna in my house. And she said, oh no, I can't go there, I'm a young girl. And Krishna is there, how can I go? And her shaka said, no, no, we'll come with you, don't worry, just so that we'll take... She won't see Krishna even. We'll, she won't even see Krishna's shadow. We'll take great care of us as she... So, like this, under the pretext of being, being the hell with Krishna, and, uh, she's feigning, feigning the uh, fear of... of uh, Anyway, so she goes with her shakis, so she's so happy, it's all she ever wants to do is serve Krishna and cook for Krishna. So they go to Jasoda's house. Jasoda has 50 stoves in her kitchen. So Radharani is cooking on all these different stoves, and all of her shakis are helping, they're all cutting sabjis and grinding spices, and Radharani is running from one stove to another another one <laughs> and the shakis are giving the spices and she's uh, so like this uh, every day she cooks a great feast for Krishna the Chapon Bhoga Bhakti Thakur sings in the, uh, the Raj Bhoga Artik song Chukta Shakaya Dibaji Nalita Kushmando Dalida no Duta Tombi Dari Mocha Kanda Mudga Bora Masha Bora Rotika Kritana Shashkuli Pishaka Kira Puli Payashana Kapuro Ramita Kelly Ramba Kira Shora Amritara Salayamla Dwada Sapakar Cho Chatnis Ocha Luchi chini sharapori ladura shabali bogina karena krishna hai kutahali That's what she's cooking for Krishna every morning. <laughs> this before he goes out with the cows because he'll get hungry, the little boy, so just so he must have a big feast. Uh, so that is what, what is cooked. Bhakti no Thakur calls it the uh, Raj Bog Artig song because Nobody can cook it for breakfast. Krishna takes it for breakfast. That's his breakfast. But we don't have, <laughs> we don't have enough time to cook chop on 56 items before <laughs> breakfast. Uh, so he's, off, he's, he's called it the Bogarty song. At least at 12 o'clock, you, you, you can get it together by 12 o'clock by cooking 56 items of nice preparations. Ah, so then Krishna relishes it. Uh, prasadam cooked by Radha and then we can get Krishna Prasadam. Krishna Prasadam ki jai. So, so this is the way it goes up through Parampra. We offer the boga. It was, um, one of the items of the, in the 64 upacharas we're offering in deity worship is asan, in the fifth number upachara from the 64 upacharas called asana. So I asked Srila Prabhupada, what is the meaning of this asana? And he said, yes, you have a, the, the picture of the guru is there and you bring the asan, asan means sitting place, mat. So you bring the asan, and he said, this asan is for the guru. And we offer the boga to the guru, and he offers to his guru. And then he will offer to his guru. And like that, it will be offered to Radha and then Krishna. He said, this is the system, parampara, parampara system. Uh, 
So this is the system. So ultimately, when we are offering the boga to Guru, he offers to his Guru. Then ultimately it's offered to Sri Mata Radharani and thank you. They're not eating it, they're passing it up. <laughs> and uh, so the... Uh, yeah, so ultimately then, for us, it goes to Radha. For other devotees, it will go to Lakshmi or Sita Radha. And they will offer to Ram, Lord Narayana, or Radharani will offer to Krishna. Then Krishna will happily accept that, eat it, then it will come back down Parampara as Mahaprasad. Therefore, Radharani is our guru, Parampara guru. <coughs> So, uh, yeah, Radharani, the Tatwa, Haladini Shakti, Haladini potency, the pleasure giving potency. <coughs> it's, um, uh, so, sometimes we hear uh, of Bhakti Devi. The question often comes up, who is Bhakti Devi? And most people understand Radharani is Bhakti Devi. Or sometimes Tulsi, Vishnu Bhakti Pradi Devi. <coughs> so, the description of the Bhakti Devi Because it's a combination of Haladini potency, so in that aspect, then Radharani is Bhakti Devi. But this is uh, from the Harinam Chintamani. This chapter is Development of Rasha. Uh, so then, uh, by the great mercy of the Holy Name, a mixture of the Haladini and Sanvit Shaktis from the spiritual world combined as Bhakti Devi herself. So the Haladini, the pleasure giving potency and the Sambit. Sambit means conscious. We're aware. Consciousness. Oh, from that time, Sambit and Aladini descend from the spiritual world, they combined as Bhakti Devi herself. They descend on the small jiva who possesses only a small portion of Aladini and some energy. Bhakti Devi reveals to the jiva the ingredients of rasa in the full blown flower of the holy name. By the mercy of the pure jiva, by her mercy, the pure jiva takes on his spiritual body and enters into the experience of rasa. It's also mentioned in the Well, it's mentioned in Chaitanya Chaitanya. Anyway, it's saying the same thing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Anyway, I can't see it. But it says that in the same the same thing in the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, also in Brahma Samhita that the living entity, uh, we want bhakti 
we want love of Krishna. But because of our minute size, we're not powerful enough to reach Krishna. We are Satchit Ananda, we're that Haladini Sambit and Sandini potency. Their eternal potency is that the living entity is, that is the identity of the living entity. So when one uh, becomes conscious of his real identity, or his real identity, and understands the, uh, that he's the eternal servant of Krishna and he wants to engage in service to re re receive the goal of devotional service, love of Godhead. And, uh, but the jiva, the uh, the jiva is not powerful enough to reach Krishna because of his minute size. But by the, his process of bhakti, sadhana bhakti, and his practicing sadhana bhakti, uh, then he uh, generally he said, by the mercy of the holy name or by the mercy of someone, guru or Krishna himself. Uh, that, that Krishna is recommended by your, your guardian angel or fairy godmother, guru, whoever it is, but someone may recommend, or, or Radharani may recommend to Krishna that he's performing very nice service, she's performing nice service, please be merciful. And Krishna, he, he will not refuse if Radharani recommends a person. Uh, so then at that time, because the, the, the achiever is too small to approach Krishna. At that time, Krishna, he sends his haladini potency and sambit potency. He is unlimited and under unlimited consciousness. So at that time, the Krishna, he sends his haladini potency and the sambit potency to mix with the jiva. Then, then you become very attractive because the Haladini potency has increased. So that's what attracts Krishna. So Krishna is, wherever that service is, Haladini potency is acting, and Krishna is attracted to it. <coughs> so in this way, the, uh, uh, how we can attract Krishna? Uh, through this process of, of, of Bhakti Yoga. So then Radharani herself becomes Bhakti Devi. Combination of the sambit and san, uh, sambit and haladini potency uh, enters enters the heart, and then you become very attracted to Krishna. There is uh, there is haladini. He's looking. Where is haladini? That means his pleasure. So then Krishna becomes very much attracted to that haladini in the heart, and you enter into your eternal relationship with Krishna. Hare Krishna. And uh, this is our goal actually of the devotees. We want to enter into that situation of service to Radha and Krishna ultimately. Naham Bhircho Narapati Navaishana Shudro Naham Paranina Chatva Kintu Patan Nikila Paramanandaram Gopi Pariyakamalo Das 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 Anodas to become the servants of the servants of the servants of of Gopi Pariyakamalo Das Das Gopi Nath, the master of the Gopis. This is our identity to be given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We are this. He identified himself. I am servant and the servant of the servant of the master of the gopis. Master means not, and gopi means gopi, so gopi not. Gopi not is our Ishtadeva for the followers of Goranga Mahaprabhu and Krishna. So Mahaprabhu has given us our identity. Um, so we belong in that atmosphere of bringing Radha and Krishna pleasure, that Haladini potency, that Haladini atmosphere. And Srila Prabhupada <clears throat> he concludes in Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada's conclusion. Often the uh, author of a book 
he reveals the conclusion at the end. Often they're like that, you get the conclusion, the Siddhanta comes at the end. So at the end of Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, he is giving us the Siddhanta. The whole Bhagavad Gita. So this is from the uh, 18th chapter, the last chapter. Last chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, text 73. The last shloka of Bhagavad Gita. The last purport of Bhagavad Gita. The last sentence or paragraph. Last paragraph of Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada is explaining that he The living entity in his original position, his pure spirit, he is just like the atomic particle of the Supreme Spirit. A conditioned entity, however, has a marginal energy of the Lord. He tends to be in contact with both the material energy and spiritual energy. In other words, the living entity is situated between the two energies of the Lord. And because he belongs to the superior energy of the Lord, he has a particle of independence. By a proper use of this independence, he comes under the direct order of Krishna and he attains his normal condition in the pleasure-giving potency. potency ki. Okay. So this is where Prabhupada's taken us. You attain your normal condition in the pleasure given potency. That means you go all the pastimes are going on under this pleasure potency. So you, we go back to God. Have we joined that in atmosphere of Haladini where Krishna's pleasure is the only objective and all of the activities there. All the services. Krishna's pleasure is the only objective. <coughs> So we go back into that and Prabhupada's, it's in English, but he finishes on this point, the last sentence. Thus he maintains his normal condition in the pleasure-giving potency. That's how, in Bengali it says Haladini potency. So this is where Prabhupada is taking us through Bhagavad Gita as it is, into that atmosphere of Haladini where everything is, every, everyone and everything is being used for serving Krishna Radha and Krishna. <laughs> That's where Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita is taken. Everything is in my books, Prabhupada said. Prabhupada Ki <clears throat> So, we have some information of <clears throat> Sri Radharani from the Radha Krishna Gadasa Deepika of Srila Rupa Goswami. <coughs> this is a translation from Kusha Karata Prabhu. <coughs> and <coughs> After describing Krishna's beauty and Krishna's birthday, then Rupa Goswami is describing the Radharani's qualities. Among all the beautiful gopis, Srimata Radharani is the best. Radharani is the queen of Vrindavan. She has many famous friends, headed by Lalita and Vishaka. Vishaka Devi Ki. Vishaka Shaki Arivab Mahotsab Titi Ki It's her birthday today also, Vishaka Devi. Srimata Radharani's rival uh, is Chandravali. Among Chandravali's friends are Padma, Shama, Shaiva, Bhadra, Vichitra, Gopali, Polika, Chandra, Shalika, 
Mangala and many more. The beautiful gope is maybe considered in hundreds of groups. Each group contains hundreds and thousands of gopis. Variety is like the spice of life. So Krishna, there are different groups, different. So Krishna, he likes like a bumblebee. He goes from one flower, takes a little bit of nectar, goes to another. So Krishna is like that. <laughs> so, so many different groups, different qualities, different pastimes. Yeah, hundreds and thousands. Among these gopis, the most important are Srimata Radharani, Chandravali, Badura, Shaimra and Polika. These gopis are full of all transcendental good qualities. So there are different descriptions of different shakis, shakas, uh, shakis. And um, different descriptions. But when we say Asta Shaki, we were referring to Lalita Vishaka and Dulaka, Ranga Devi, Sudevi, Champaka Chichu Devi, and Tunga Vijay Devi. These are actually Radharani's intimate friends. They're also group leaders like Sham and Polika and Chandravali. They all have, they're group, they have, they're leaders of groups. So Radharani's friends, Asta Shaki, they're also group leaders, but they choose to come and serve Srimata Radharani because they know by pleasing Radharani, Krishna's pleasure will be obtained. So they're considered the best, they're friends, intimate friends, but you often get descriptions of the main shakis, eight main shakis, and, but they're, they're different kind of shakis. But these are the friend, intimate friends, so they want to be intimate, friendly with Radharani, then they'll easily get the mercy of Krishna. Now the beauty of Srimata Radharani's transcendental form will be described. Shimata Radharani is expert in fine arts and her transcendental form is like an ocean of nectar. Her splendid bodily luster is like the yellow pigment, Gorochana, molten gold or stationary lightning. Uh, she wears wonderful, wonderfully beautiful blue garments and she is decorated with various pearls and flowers. She is very beautiful and she has long nice braided hair. She is decorated with a garland of flowers and a beautiful pearl necklace. Her splendid forehead is decorated with the red pigment Sindur with the beautiful locks of curling hair. So she has a spot here, it's called the Karma Yantra, the Karma Yantra. It's red, kumkum kum they put, and eight chandan spots around it, and sometimes one kasturi spot there also. It's called the Karma Yantra, everything is personified in the spiritual realm, so that is the personality who is rather on his Karma Yantra. Decorated with blue bangles, her arms have defeated Cupid's staff with their beauty. Decorated with black mascara, reaching back to her ears, Srimata Radharani's lotus eyes are most beautiful in the three planetary systems. Her nose is beautiful like a sesame flower, and it's nicely decorated with a pearl. Sesame flower Sesame flower, you have to look from the top, look down onto the sesame flower. And it has a little, it's a very small flower, but it has kind of like nostrils. If you look down from that position, you get these little nostril flares. So the uh, sesame seed flower is like that. If you look from the top, you can see like little nose right around. So Krishna's nose is also described as like sesame seed also, flower. Ah, she is anointed with various perfumes. She is splendidly beautiful. 
Her ears are decorated with wonderful earrings and her nectarian lips defeat the red lotus flowers. Her teeth are like rows of pearls and her tongue is very beautiful. Decorate with nectarian smile of pure love for Krishna. Her beautiful face is as splendid as a million moons. The beauty of her chin has defeated and bewildered the demigod Cupid. Decorated with a drop of musk, her chin appears like a golden lotus flower with a bumblebee. So her chin is like a flower and she has black was it? Musk, yeah, musk is a deep brown color. So she has a black, it looks blackish. It's a black spot. The chin is like lotus. And the, like the black spot is a bumblebee. Like a bumblebee. Bearing all the marks of wonderful beauty, her neck is adorned with the strings of pearls. Her neck, back and sides are enchantingly beautiful. Her beautiful breasts are like two splendid golden water pots covered by a bodice and decorated with necklace of pearls. Her beautiful encha enchanting arms are decorated with jeweled armlets. Her arms are also decorated with jeweled bracelets and other kinds of jeweled ornaments. Her hands are like two red lotus flowers illuminated by the series of moons that are her fingernails. What time are we supposed to finish? Huh? Uh, now? Okay. Okay. Shimadu Radharani Arivav Mahot Sabtiti Ki Jai Radharani's appearance day Ki Jai Nitai Go Premanandi Thank you. Hare Krishna. Prabhupada, he's in. Sunday, the Bhakti, he's in.